The homeless crisis in our country has gone from bad to worse. As the crisis deepens, so has the criminalization of homelessness. RV after RV parked here because people have nowhere else to go. New data shows that homelessness in the United States is at an all-time high. But there's one country that has redefined how nations can tackle homelessness. Finland is one of the only countries in the world to significantly decrease homelessness. Invisible people traveled to Helsinki to investigate. I was walking areas in the city. If it was America, you would would have seen countless homeless people with the leaders who made it happen the worse the situation is the, the more important it is that you at least start a change citizens living in housing first units is your life better now in housing i don't wanna lie it's not and everything is better when i live here and the staff that supports them a person needs a home so the other stuff can happen. You can never get so low that we will not be beside you. Housing first comes from USA. We changed the systems completely. We went all in with the housing first. And same time, this kind of camps disappeared. In America, people don't want to give housing to homeless people. What would you say to them? She would say that it saved her life and it will save others' lives too. And so that's why Housing First is so great, because otherwise uh, she might be dead. How has her life changed in housing? She doesn't use drugs anymore and that's quite big. Work. There's a rhythm. In life, normally, Santa, normal life, normal life, which is what she wanted. What's the favorite part of your apartment? Thank you. They are about gate here. Bed and the kitchen. What is homelessness like in Finland? Bad. Very bad. Pelot. And it was very scary. <laughs> Winters are cold. Yeah. And they are long. Mm. Oh, much as hell in, the, in Finland, because <laughs> you be real cold, real wet. Not very nice. But where? Where is it nice? 1990s, we still have 20,000 homeless people. And of course, at some point, the, there was a real struggle that there were many people sleeping on the streets. And then, you know, because the winters are really harsh here in, in Finland, they would also die on the streets. So I think that was a really, really the wake up call that we need to do something and change the policies quite slowly. And then, then we get uh, the rapid phase when we start the Housing First 2008. That's when they went all in on Housing First. They renovated almost all of the shelters into Housing First buildings to give homeless people their own individual apartments. They also built more affordable housing across the country, and it seems to have paid off. In five years, we both created the program and halved the long-term homelessness in Finland. Homelessness in Finland has changed quite dramatically since 2008, for example, in the city of Helsinki, which is the capital city. You will not see tents, sleeping bags or, or rough sleepers whatsoever. We want to end homelessness or we want to end rough sleeping. I think, you know, some people would have laughed at us that, you know, that's not possible ever. But, you know, uh, I think we have proved them wrong. We spent days on our own in Helsinki, looking for homeless people, and we couldn't find them. It was surreal. So, are there really none left? Juha told us this isn't a visible phenomenon, so we needed to go inside to find them. So, welcome to our organization, No Fixed Abode. You entered to our day center, Vepa, where people who are sleeping rough, they can come here. And this is kind of living room. We serve every day a warm meal, mainly the peer support and also the professional guidance how to find an apartment. The housing first started in our organization and we are still running the first housing first unit, Sallikoti, here in Finland. How does this connect with the city services? Our functions are separated from the, the city services. We do lots of collaboration with, uh, with the city. People who are doing the outreach work come here in regular basis and, and we share information and kind of like what is going on with people who are sleeping rough. Hello, I'm doing street work in streets of Helsinki. I want to invite you to see outreach work. 
So people who are walking their dogs and walking around, if they find tents, they maybe make a call. Some, sometimes we find find a new one, uh, get informed for a new place. Yeah, it's really under a bridge. <laughs> Of course, it's so different before 2010 because there was so much people rough sleeping in this kind of tent camp. 2010 and 2013 have built many new places and same time this kind of camps disappeared. Housing First is, a, is an idea where people have their own rental contracts and own homes and uh, they also get support in the housing. Earlier it was like that you had to kind of like earn to get a house, you had to like rehabilitate from uh, abuse problems and things like that. But the Finnish people let one important truth guide their policy. It's kind of impossible to rehabilitate from the streets, so a person needs a home so the other stuff can happen after that. Everyone needs a home. We try to make sure that everyone gets that opportunity. And that sounds incredible, but we wondered, how can Finland possibly keep up with the demand? Aren't more people falling into homelessness every day there too? So we asked Finland's former housing minister who spearheaded the entire project. The housing market do not work perfectly. We need also to regulate part of the markets, not the whole, not at all. And the, the way we have done it has been in Helsinki that we have uh, built affordable housing where both the, the federal state and the, the city uh, subsidizes this, this construction uh, actually quite a lot. So this is one of our buildings constructed by Y Foundation USAT. And it's meant for people with, with low income. We have built this one actually together with the Living Music Association, which means that there is certain parts of the apartments are reserved for low income rock musicians. There is a rehearsal space for the musicians and those kind of things. So the city of Helsinki has decided that there has to be at least 25% affordable housing. So people with different backgrounds, different income levels, they share the same playgrounds and, and same services. And so really proud that the city of Helsinki has decided to do that. So affordable housing is dedicated to, to reduce homelessness and give low-income people a chance to get a flat even in the cities. But then uh, that is not the way you can tackle the severe homelessness and there you need different kind of methods. We then had the, the housing first concept. We are in a housing unit Pessi right now. Our tenants who live uh, in this floor they can uh, make food together and uh, they uh, also take care of the flo floor uh, cleaning and such kind of things. Mm -hmm. Just move in. Mm -hmm. They come to my penthouse. That's in Koti. <laughs> it's his home. This is my home. How long was he sleeping rough? Um, he, he left his step-parents when he was 15 and he was living in a uh, hallway. How long has he been in housing? 13 years. 13 years in housing? That's, is this his longest time in housing? This 15 years is the longest period ever. How has his life changed in housing? No. His life is more orderly right now because he doesn't use constantly drugs. He's doing substitute treatment for opiates. How did you survive homelessness, especially in the cold? He knows how to open doors without a key. He had some kind of like tool, so he knew how to go the hallway. So he slept in doorways. Yeah. In 1985, in the city of Helsinki, there was around 2,000 shelter beds, and now the number is 200. There is still, still, you know, rooms that you share with two or three different people and, and so on. If the solution for you is scattered housing or a housing first unit, you are not waiting in a shelter or on the streets. Then the time that you need to wait that apartment and support to come available, you will have access to temporary accommodation, which means that you have a room of your own, and then you share the kitchen and bathroom with someone else. For a year I had to go for the night's emergency housing. Then when I contacted social services on this matter, it didn't take long to get here. Own room with the lock. But even with his own room, he's still considered homeless. 
He'll stay there until placed in his own apartment with a signed lease. Only then is he no longer homeless. And this process generally seems to take months, not years like in the US. So even though the social benefit system costs a lot of money, it's still cheaper than having people sleep on the streets in a tent or having, having to go them through with the shelter and temporary accommodation over and over again and using the extremely expensive emergency services in the health sector or social sector or in the justice department sector. And then of course it's the right thing to do for the people to make sure that everyone has a home of their own. So even with the low number of shelter beds, there is actually space in shelters to be used as emergency shelter, which makes the outreach team's job a bit easier, less frustrating. This empowers them as boots on the ground to play a larger role in improving the problem as well. We went out with an outreach team where they talk about areas of housing first that need to be improved. We are doing outreach work, but also we try to change the system. Yeah, social reporting, and uh, this kind of structural social yeah. work. When we are writing the social report, we are sending straight to the people who are making decisions. So politicians get our social reporting same time that our boss is getting that. Media is getting same time that our boss is getting. No one can influence what we are writing in. People who have experienced homelessness, they are the best advocacy workers, they are the best to explaining to decision makers, to the politicians, what they should do. What happens when politicians change and stop supporting housing first? Basically, we shouldn't need to be worried about the issue, but then again, if you follow the conversation at the moment in the newspapers, it might be a little bit um, uncertain. But then again, we have a, I think we have a written commitment from the new government to, to be in this and, and take care of the issue. So let's hope that happens also. I think it was important from the very beginning that the program was actually led by a center-right politician like me. We needed the 10 biggest cities in Finland uh, to be on board. And, and those 10 cities, they had different kind of political majorities. We explained each and every mayor and a lot of city councillors and so on. It is the interest of everyone that we are able to reduce the homelessness. Explained how it makes cities safer, how it makes cities more pleasant, and that in the long run, you even save taxpayers money. So you could say that we had all the main parties in Finland somehow involved from the beginning, which of course then creates a better basis that these programs and these uh, concepts will be respected uh, even in the future. So what would you tell Americans that don't support Housing First? They say, oh, that's great for them, but we can't do it here. So we are a very sm small country and you are the big country, you have a lot of money, so if you want, you can really do that. <laughs> Make the change. And housing first comes from USA. <laughs> hey, you guys took the idea and ran with it. And we have more resources and obviously more homelessness, but we're not doing it as good as you. And if we did, we would be reducing homelessness. Yeah, if you want, you can do it. In the US, uh, Housing First this is doable. Trying to think about why we want to build affordable housing and how that connects with the Housing First. And at the end of the day, if you don't care about people and humanity, then I think most people will care about the finance things. So it's always much cheaper to house people and, and have the right support for people than that they are sleeping on the streets, on the tents going through the shelters and then this kind of revolving door effect. It's totally doable. There's need to be a lot of courage to do different kind of decisions regarding affordable housing and housing first, but also different kind of prevention solutions. So when people are struggling with their mortgage or their rents, so that there would be different services to help them so that they don't end up being homeless altogether. So combining those things, prevention, affordable social housing and housing first, miracles can happen. It's been a great relief. It's been so long since I had a place to go home. Is your life better now in housing?
And uh, I don't wanna lie, it's not. I should stop doing drugs and get back to work. When did you start using? About six, seven years ago. How old are you? 22 now. The biggest reason for starting to use intravenous drugs was because my best friend killed himself. Residents, they have history of years of abuse problems or mental health problems or homelessness. Of course, giving them an apartment, it doesn't fix anything in a you know, months or even years. It takes a long time to learn to trust. Trust that, that okay, this is really my home and it, it is permanent. I don't have to move out soon. It's a normal one I go to sleep. <laughs> I just throw the stuff. Messy apartment is uh, better than the streets. It's a uh, place where they can feel safe. It's a place where they have a door they can lock, that they can regulate who comes in. They can sleep there in peace. Anybody that has a very messy room, they also have a very messy mind. And when you lose hope and when you are very depressed, you don't have much energy. And sometimes it's also because you've never learned how to keep a tidy home. Nobody never taught you really. Maybe you've been in an, some kind of an institution living your childhood. You've never seen what a home looks like. What do you do at home? How do you clean your kitchen table? How do you do your, uh, how do you clean your toilet? Should you do it every week? Why should you do it? How to do it? So there's a many ways we can help because if you have been get, getting these problems for 10 years, how can they be solved in one week or two weeks? We have to be patient. You can never get so low that we will not be beside you. We will walk with you. The problems of Housing First do not overshadow its impact. This young man is no longer homeless. And this young man is going into treatment. Everybody's talking about housing first, housing first. Yeah. It's important, but it's more than housing first. It is. It, yeah, is. it is. It's also support that comes together with housing. So we don't leave a person alone with apartment. And their definition of support is impressive. Every building we visited had jobs and activities for its residents. We're talking recording studios, gardens, gyms, outdoor fireplaces, finished saunas. It's clear they're thinking less about housing numbers and more about improving the lives of each individual person living there. We have to understand that housing first is not housing only. If I have problem, here is stuff and I can call them. Hey, I have little not good feelings. They help me if I have something paper, but I don't understand. I can go there and say, hey, I don't know what I do in this. They help me. We have work here four days in the week, Monday or Thursday, four hours. We give little money. So how long have you lived here? Almost two years. Almost two years. You like it? Yeah, yeah. It's very, very, very good. If I not live here, I drink uh, more and more. And everything is better when I live here. People saying a lot. They used to drink because there's nothing. They were alone. They don't have really nothing to do. And when they're here, the community is helping and they have this little work here and of course the staff who can support them to be sober. So she was using drugs when she was homeless? She was like so scared she had to be under toxication in order to cope with that situation. So that's why she used drugs and that's why she doesn't use them anymore. She ne needed no treatment because she, when she got her own home and own key and, and then she started working here, it changed her life and she said that she just left the drugs after that uh, by her own will. 
Of what kind of drugs? Kaikkea. Everything. That's her answer. See this? That is a housing first building. Almost a hundred formerly homeless people because it's not a shelter. Many of them are still substance users, but they're using inside and families are walking by children playing safe smiling that's how you end homelessness we're in downtown helsinki area called Töl, which is a quite wealthy neighborhood Ruusulankatu housing unit is 10 years old the people who work in that housing unit are doing a lot of work regarding that issue the nimby effect then we also have our own specialist worker she organizes meetings with the tenants and with the neighbors. It is better to place these units downtown and in those places where you have a lot of people instead of those places where you have less of them. Because in downtown Helsinki, downtown cities, people are used to, to all kinds of people. And actually, you don't notice these units as uh, easily as you certainly do in other neighborhoods. But from the very beginning, we also understood that we treated these people as human beings, not as homelessness people. You lose hope when you are on the street, and it means that you die sooner. That's, that's just a fact. It's quite uh, hard to survive on the street for like for decades. And so if you get a home, you get hope and you start taking care of your life. So you can become part of the society again, because when you are homeless, it feels like it, that you are not part of the society any, anymore, that you are invisible and you, you are like an outcast. I lived 10 years on the street. Sorry. Really upsetting. I felt that I was like on the bottom of society. It's a it's a priority that if you have a place to be, like even a place to stay, or if you have an apartment, it's it's like uh, you are human. Without that, you are not. Okay, so yeah, I wouldn't call this a house full of drug addicts. I would call this a house full of people who have problems with uh, substance abusing. I believe that no one should be on the streets. Like, it, it's not good for anyone, it's not good for them, and it's not good for the society. Like, who benefits from, from that? And we used to think that uh, those people need to get rid of alcohol in order to be able to live in a flat. In that time, they went long rehabs. And after that, when they collapsed, they lost their homes and that's not a very good thing as we, as we can see it. And that's why we think that our Housing First program is the best way to uh, make people uh, believe that they, they can live with a little of support, not losing their homes if they are using drugs or drinking alcohol or have some other problems in life. With some people, it, it, it might be really difficult for, for helping them in, in the housing support because they might be extremely violent and uh, in some cases they have to be just signed out and then they continue queuing to the, to the next place. And now that it, it's been already in um, work for over 10 years, uh, I think there's a lot of experience already <laughs> how it's working or what's not working and mainly um, it's that we have to talk with the tenants all the time we have to have meetings and we have to talk with them every day and when we hear each other we also have respect for each other and some kind of an appreciation and that's how we change things that need to be changed in america People don't want to give housing to homeless people. What would you say to them? She would say that it saved her life and it will save others' lives too. And so that's why Housing First is so great, because otherwise uh, she might be dead. But you could say that the worse the situation is, the, the more important it is that you at least start a change reducing the homelessness.
It is a human right. It is a basic right. Everybody should have a home. I'm sure that everyone can do housing first. It is actually, you could say that it's human being first. In all democracies, all around the world, you see homelessness people in the streets. In Finland, in Helsinki, you see less because of the housing first. This is a safer and more pleasant city. And it's also a better city for visitors, for tourists, and also a better city for, for example, foreign direct investments, knowing that this is a, a clean, safe, pleasant, well-organized city. Putting housing first, and that can be scaled, that can be copied anywhere in the world. I've been in 10 different countries, over 300 cities doing this. When I arrived in Helsinki, it was hard to even to put words, the feeling because I didn't see a homeless person. In America, we're often selfish. People are driven by what's in it for them. I mean, we can't even get affordable health care for everybody. So how are we going to change culture so that we can have affordable housing for everybody? We know how to end homelessness. We've known for a long time. This week, we've been able to see how Housing First implemented at scale can solve homelessness. But the question remains, will Americans do what we need to do to fix the affordable housing crisis and to start providing homeless people with the housing and the support services they need.